Okay, well I'm speaking to you here out in the woods, out here in the Rothrock State Forest, overlooking State College down there in the valley. I love to get out in the woods and I'm going to try to give you some of these videos from on location, some of the places that I think are really great around here and not very far away from Penn State, so I do encourage you to get out and get into the woods and see these beautiful surroundings of ours. Our job today in class is just two things. We want to both talk about values and pick up that conversation from Wednesday, and then also focus on the organizational task of setting up your response papers. There are going to be 10 response papers all together, but you only do one of them. And so in your groups of 10, your research pods, everybody in that group will do a response paper eventually throughout the semester. Two of you are going to do a response paper very soon. In fact, the first one is going to be due on Monday. And so a big task for us today is to identify people who are ready to go with response papers. And a couple of you have had a class with me before, so you know what this is all about. And uh, so that we can know right away who's going to be doing these for these first two weeks. So you want to look ahead at perusal to see the readings, to see the assignments uh, for those days, so you have a good sense of what's uh, to be expected of you in these two response papers. Now the outline for the response paper is all there for you on Canvas. You can read that in detail. I'm not going to go over it right now. But the idea is that you will read ahead to the readings for that day when we have a guest speaker coming in. And you will write a response to their talk or one of their readings, and I ask you to focus on something very narrow within that. And then you're going to present this paper to your research pod, and together you'll workshop that uh, paper and the questions that you have so that when the speaker shows up in the webinar for that day, and again, again, the first two are either Richard Alley or Erica Smithwick. When, they, when you're a part of that webinar, you and nine of your colleagues will then be presenting uh, these questions that you've raised in your research pods to that speaker. So I know Goldie's really the star of this show, and I'll try to get her to come by and take a look, but right now she's hunting for things out in the woods. But then this discussion about values. Let's spend a little bit of time thinking about this. As you can see in the syllabus, I connect values and what I call framing. How do we frame the discussion about climate change? This is one of the points of having an interdomain course, because it's my perspective that science is really not enough to understand climate change. We also need ethics. We need the arts. We need business and economics. Uh, we need sociology. We need so many different perspectives. And one of the great things about this class is that you, many of you, bring those different perspectives into our discussion. But what does it mean when we then frame the question about climate change in these different ways? So, for example, I love winter. I'm out here in the snow. Nothing is exciting to me as playing in the snow and skiing and traipsing around the woods in the winter. It is valuable to me. And to be in a world where these snows come less often, where the climate itself is changing in this way, that is something that I find really upsetting. Oh, look, here she is. Um, so this value that I have causes me to frame the issue of climate change around particular things what's going to happen in terms of snow. This is something I want to know about climate change. And so, and so I want you to think about the values, even as somebody like Richard Alley, what does he think is important and why does he uh, frame the question of the issues of climate change in the way that he does? Okay, let's make sure that we're all on the same page. So today I want to cover a few of the housekeeping details Make sure that you understand the structure of this course and where this unit fits into this course overall. So this is the first unit 
and the first week, we're talking about values and framing the issue. Again, overall, the first unit focuses on science, and the second on ethics, and the third on solutions. So we're in the science part of this course, in the first part of this, which is framing the climate issue. That's what we're talking about both Wednesday and today. Then we'll be addressing the history of energy usage in Pennsylvania, the carbon cycle, history of Earth's climate, measuring the current warming, and the role of the oceans. So this gives you an overview of the different areas of science we'll be covering in this class. And as you can see, we cover quite a few different areas of science, from biology, chemistry, to geosciences, and meteorology. Chemistry fits in quite a bit in all of this, and fair warning, I start off as a chemical engineer at Purdue University, my first year of college, so I kind of like chemistry. Now, to some of the housekeeping details. I want to emphasize that your grade is based on points, not on the percentage. And over the course of time, you'll see those points build up on Canvas and the grade book. Don't be fooled because sometimes the percentage is off. There are a thousand possible points and out of that your grade is taken. In actuality, there are even more than a thousand points because of all the extra credit. So sometimes that follows up the percentages that you see on Canvas. Don't be fooled by that. Your next assignments that are due are on February 5th and February 12th, two quizzes. Note that these quizzes aren't worth very much, just 20 points out of a thousand total points. They're really meant more to mark where you are and what your understanding is and to make sure that you feel well prepared for that first unit exam which at 200 points is worth quite a bit more. Of course, for some of you, there'll also be response papers that are due in this first unit. Then you, there's your participation grade. Again, I can't grade you on attendance per se, but your participation in terms of your activity, active involvement in the research pod discussions, and also your work on perusal in terms of the comments you make and the responses you make to other people's comments. All this is going to be graded and there'll be a running average. This will be updated three times over the course of the semester. So the first assessment will be at the end of this unit. Finally, you'll find a lot of extra credit. Uh, there will be regularly lots of activities here uh, on campus. Of course, this will all be over Zoom, at least to begin with. And I'll announce these various lectures if you attend them and then write up just a paragraph on Canvas and submit that uh, within a day or two of the event, you get five points of extra credit for that, up to 50 possible points. So this is uh, possibly up to half a letter grade uh, for extra credit. Those also extra credit for consistently excellent comments on perusal. And from time to time, there'll be other assignments that will also count for extra credit. If you have any questions about the points, you look over the syllabus, please don't hesitate to let me know. Now, as I'm talking, I just want to show you just how attentive Goldie is to this discussion. Look at her sitting there, paying close attention. She wants to be a part of this conversation. Now, let's turn to the discussion for today. You'll see on the syllabus that there are objectives for every week, and the objective for this week is to think about the values and the power of framing the issue of climate change. Uh, we talked on Wednesday, we heard some views from various uh, politicians. We also looked at some paintings from artists and uh, I hope to hear a bit more from you about how that discussion went. But of course, this is the point, is there are all these different ways of framing. And in framing an issue, whether climate change or anything else, our emotions and our values come into play. Art and science are two ways of accessing this. But we have to really ask ourselves, 
is climate change really a scientific problem? Is it a technical problem? Is it one of justice? Do we have to remake our entire society to respond to climate change? Can we stop climate change? Or should we really just focus on adapting to climate change? In all these ways, how we think about climate change, how we frame the issue to begin with, helps to determine what we're going to focus on. In our discussion, we're going to be bringing ethics to bear. And I want to jump the gun a little bit and move already to the second unit of this class and think about a theory or a definition of ethics. We're not going to discuss this in full today or even in the next couple of weeks. I want you to have in the back of your mind that according to Anthony Weston in our textbook uh, that we're using in this class, a definition of ethics is taking care for the basic needs and legitimate expectations of others as well as our own. The important point for us today is that ethics is other-oriented. You really can't be ethical just by yourself. And so understanding others is just as important as understanding ourselves. And that's why we're spending time thinking about the values and framing that others bring to bear in terms of climate so that we can understand our own values and framing in contrast to theirs. So, in class on Friday, then, you're going to be moving into your breakout rooms after we have a first session all together. And in these breakout rooms, your jobs, of course, are to understand what the response paper project is and to assign the first two presenters. There's a Google Doc, and I'll give you the link to that, and you can fill out as much of that as you can for your pod so that everybody knows who is presenting when throughout the semester. And then you should focus your discussion of values and framings on the reading for today from Earth the Operator's Manual, ETOM. I hope that, of course, by Friday you will have read this and made comments and noted areas uh, of question and concern, but also where you find phrases or words that help us to identify what Richard Alley's values and what his framing is in terms of climate change. And then, of course, you should designate one person to bring these comments and questions back to the group as a whole, and we'll have a discussion at 1245, a general discussion on values and framing. And that's our class for Friday. Okay, that's it for us for today. Thanks for paying attention and watching this video, and I look forward to discussing things with you in class.